So I'm going to do a little strange new activation and uh, it comes from Genesis 1 verse 2. It says, And the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the deep. If you read Amplified, it says, Hovered slash brooded. Brooded, like if you think of a mother hen who has, she broods on her, first of all, her eggs. They, they say that the hen is brooding. And so then eventually then she has the chicks and now she begins to bring those chicks under and she broods over the chicks. So Holy Spirit brooded over the face of the deep. Well, you and I, being the qualified, duly authorized authorities over this earth to take dominion over the earth, right? And subdue it. So in our heavenly place, along with Holy Spirit, we're going to do a, I'll invite you into doing a little exercise, a little activation. So imagine, and we're in the heavenlies, and imagine you're looking down into the earth situation, just like Holy Spirit did. He looked down into the earth and he started hovering, brooding over the earth. So it might help to like put your hand like this down into whatever those earthly situations are. But today, I think we want to go to this chapel and hover over the chapel and brood over it again. Now, I don't know how much we're going to bless revival there, although on the other hand, there might be a, a huge breakout because <laughs> that's what we prayed for when we were inside those four walls. But I'd like to also call our attention to the chapel that is in your heart. There's a chapel in here that as we brood over it, the life of God germinates. Woo! Woo, boy. It begins to take root, begins to sprout, begins to spring up the plantings of the Lord springing up to become mighty oaks of righteousness. That's what happened with those revivalists back then. They became mighty oaks in the earth. You and I possess seed plantings, implantations from the Lord that are, are we're just going to brood over it today some. And so uh, it's going to help me to go to that chapel, enter into the, the transferings, the transpiring, between man and God, God and man in that chapel, but it's not just applicable to that chapel, it's also applicable to this chapel right here. So here's how it goes. Your hands down, and we start with a low pitch, like whoa. Now we're going to cover a, a lot of range of pitches, and in essence, in essence, you have to use your little boy brain, not your big boy brain. <laughs> you have to become like a little child. We're covering all the frequencies of the various things that God wants to accomplish. The low frequencies, and then we're going to go up, and then up, and then up, and up, and up, and up. So, just cover all the frequencies, which would, in essence, cover all the thoughts of God, the sparks of God, the dreams of God that have been planted in us that he's waiting to see fully germinated, fully bring, brought forth into full fruit. Father, thank you that in you, since we are in Christ, and Colossians 3, 4 says we're hidden with Christ inside of you, and you're omnipresent, that means and it makes us to be omnipresent also, as long as we're in you. And Father, boy, did we feel the witness of the Spirit. Oh, and we were oh, quite aware of angelic attendance in that chapel. Today, Father, we travel with you feeling uh, drawn and having felt that drawing earlier just a few minutes ago. We go with you, the Spirit of God, taking wing on the wings of the Spirit. We find ourselves inside the chapel, very nondescript, very, non, very plain, 
nothing there that would inspire the natural mind. The only thing is it's rich. Oh, it's rich. It's pregnant with heaven. It's pregnant with the history of man and God and God and man having the most choice engagements. Oh, and we find ourselves under that roof enjoying not only the wealth of men having dug rich wells in the past, but of new wells. And we brought our wells with us. And we're adding together this sentiment and yearning the aspirations of men's hearts, the best aspirations of all mankind's hearts, that we become one with our Father and see this oneness then emerge and splash out into expressions of kingdom, as Paul says, as kingdom life emerging all around us. We did today know our meeting in this chapel in Wells, Wales. But also we bring with us the chapel that's inside of us. This place that each of us have hallowed. Oh, we've hallowed with many, many groanings and many joyous bursts, outbursts, and many tears of joy and some tears of longing. These are hallowed halls, these chapels are in each of us. We bring those today to join with this chapel in Wales. Today, Father, we want to do a little exercise. Like Holy Spirit and along with Holy Spirit, we want to brood over the deep places, the well springs, the springs from these wells those from the past as well as those that we're bringing to the table today. We brood over those wells and we begin to join with Holy Spirit. Here we go, Holy Spirit, just to cover all the frequencies and all the seeds, all the dreams of Father that are in us and have been planted from a century or so ago. We hover over those and we make a sound, a sound of Holy Spirit brooding. Whoa. All those plantings that respond to that frequency, we bless you. We move up. Da, da. see going out from us now this wonderful hovering we're allowing the Spirit of God to hover over each of those seeds each of those seeds are pregnant they're rich with the germ of life from Father's heart next one da da A little child's way, another way of engaging with Holy Spirit to hover over all of your desire, your plans that have been resident within us, waiting for the environment to emerge, the environment to be right so they could emerge. Oh, we bless those seeds. Lord, we rejoice with the great revivalists that went before us and they modeled a way of engaging with your heart and your face and they saw the reward of heaven 
rest upon them and flow forth from them. And likewise, in same manner, it's happening in our lives also. Today, may those seeds spring up to everlasting. May those new springs of living water, as Jesus calls them, spring forth, usher forth. The plantings of the Lord would flow unhindered and with great power. And may I say with Paul, we don't come with fancy words, but with great power and demonstration of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, we thank you for working with you, traveling with you. As 2 Corinthians 6, 1 says that we're now co-workers with God. Co-workers with you, Holy Spirit. Co, right alongside you, with you to bring these things forth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. 